The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. This is not Larry Pesavento. It's Basil Chap, and I do the Tiger Technicians Hour, 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern Time each day, each market day. And my service here is the opening call daily newsletter. And I have a technique called Chapman Wave. It's, it's actually the umbrella for a number of different uh, techniques. Uh, let me just show you the call, and then we can go straight to the charts because it all pertains to the charts. In the Chapman Wave, we try to identify the lowest low bar, count each successively higher peak, uh, one penny above the previous high after a pullback, starts a new leg up. It's it's a floating letter. It remains that letter until called the leg to the upside until it makes a peak. And then once it turns down, that's called the peak. And it can go. Uh, the object is to see the price go from the start to a buy signal and then a buy mode. And as soon as buy mode is mentioned and an up arrow is put in there, it means it should go to at least four higher peaks. It can go higher than that, but the target, the objective in the Chapman Wave is to get you to four higher peaks. Then an analysis has to be done. Is an instant restart for another four higher peaks. But basically, you just alphabetize A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's never an H. But D is the most important one. And then you see whether it can go higher and you assess at that particular point. I look at three core patterns, straight up, straight down, cup formation, arch formation, and a mix of one and two or one and three. If it's this and it turns out that this arch formation looks like a lowercase h, goes to peak A or B and then fails and takes out that left side low, be careful. It can go a lot lower. On the upside, if it makes this trough and curve, this cup formation in a reverse Y, takes out the left side high, it can go much higher. Simple. Okay. On paper, everything's simple. In reality, it's often a little difficult. You've got human nature that gets in the way. Uh, I know Larry was going to um, uh, have uh, Paula come on today. She does that whole emotional part very well. I just, uh, because of the speed in which I decided that I did have the hour, I decided, we, it, you know, I, I don't think he can interview her on, on another day if she doesn't mind. So what we've got is the Dow is up, up 109 at 35. 1,231. So now have a look. I use, all of this is anathema to uh, to Larry. I use moving averages. I use the MACD. I use the stochastic. I use the slow stochastic, actually. I use on-balance volume. Look how beautiful this on-balance volume. We had a move uh, right here. Where in my assessment, this was an, the only indicator that I use as overbought or oversold is the on-balance volume. This is the blue line right here. This is Joe, late Joe Granville's uh, technique that he used to use very successfully years and years ago. Um, look at that ictus right, that turnaround right there in leg E going to leg F at 35,679. Look at this. Look at that. on the exact bar. So that people say, oh, moving averages, et cetera. They, they are um, laggy indicators. Yeah, it depends on how you use these things. That's all I can say. So in this particular instance, uh, for for subscribers to my opening call, we actually I'm mentioning this only because I know Larry likes to talk about what he has, what has worked, what hasn't worked. Very comfortable doing that because he's had so many successes before. I don't I don't feel any embarrassment at all. I, I do get upset if I miss something. But we did go short. We've been long all the way. You can see it says long right here, March of 2020 at 18,213. Uh, we, we got that low right on that day. Um, <clears throat> we got the low at 28,660, not the exact price, but a little bit higher. Uh, core position in the Dow, uh, that was in October of uh, 2020, uh, 20, oh, last year, 2022. Uh, so holders, within that, we have trading positions, either three times short or three times long, the, the Dow or whatever I'm looking at that I think is appropriate. So we decided that um, right here that we would go short, but I said we're only going to go 
a very conservatively, we'll go short, we're not going to get too aggressive with that short, because why? Because this nine-period moving average was still so strong. Look, right there, there's, that's the day, the 1st of August. Look, it's still wide, and that said to me, everything about what I'm looking at in the, in the other indices says that the Dow, Dow 30, I know people joke and they always say, oh, the Dow 30, it's a, uh, you know, it's not equal weight. It's got, oh, yeah, it's only 30 stocks. Believe me, the Dow is still the key. And the Dow has just the perfect niche right now. It has, it has just every home builders. It has, I mean, it, ha it has everything. It has Home Depot. It has the banks. It has uh, Microsoft. It's just every Apple. It has everything, right? So I like the Dow. We've, I've, I've made a daily call on the Dow for 30 more years, uh, every, every single market day. Um, however, I do the same with the S&P and the others, but the Dow is what I mostly feature in terms of my newsletter. Okay, so that says there's a very slow look. Even the black 14-period uh, moving average only now is just fractionally moving down. The 9 is starting to turn down. When these both go in the same direction, there's a greater chance that you're going to. But look, even here on this horrible turn down, remember when the Dow slumped on the 26th of June, all the indicators were down. This held the nine-period moving average, and it just kept going. I, I call it the indicator of last resort. Why? Because like the, uh, uh, the, the Fed is the bank of last resort. So for me, a lot of the time, when this finally turns, that's when you, I take notice and say, okay, now we've increased whatever it is. We've got a sell signal. That'll turn it into a sell mode. And all it is is a designation. It's not saying, oh, my God, sell mode, you're going down, you know, down 1,000 points or 2,000. It just says that's the designation as it is right that moment. It could flip and turn around again. But now wait. Let's have a look at this. Isn't this interesting? Look, using the same indicator, SBX.X, that's the S&P, flipped to negative a couple of days ago. It's up nine. It was up way, way up at the 45.27 level. It's now at 44.76. Look at the QQQ. Three, three sessions, four sessions down, pink. And the last time it was pink it was just for a day back in May. May, uh, no, April the 26th and 7th. And then it went back to green. If you held it uh, all the way from the uh, 16th of March at 297, and you waited a day before you made any change, you would still be in this green until now. And then, I mean, this is one indicator. That's what, that's duration. That keeps you in for a long time. Now, within this context, look at the IWM. It, it Like the Dow, it was green over the black. It changes to pink when it goes below, and it held, 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 and today it flipped to pink. The day is young. Anything can happen. The IWM is down 71 cents at 190.86. Ha, wait a minute. Look at this. The RTY did it the day before. Look, this is the second day for the futures in the Russell 2000. So I just wanted to show you that. Now we can get on with the whole show. Um, uh, this is very important to me. The fact that um, you've got this... You've got, you're constantly having, in this particular mode, when you've started the right side of the turn of the arch formation, it says that there's a good chance that rallies are going to fail and you'll start to make lower lows. And perhaps high, lower highs and lower lows. In this case, we made a slightly higher one. I'll be back in a minute. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Fazavento. It is trade what you see day, but I'm sitting in for him. Tigers, candlestick pattern analysis is a primary tool among successful traders, and you should be no different. Candlestick patterns can demystify buy points, sell points, general price movement, and so much more. At 4 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, trader Teddy Kekstadt will be hosting a live, hour-long webinar on Japanese candlestick patterns. Teddy, the author of the Tiger Forex Report, has been trading for 33 years, and candlestick patterns have been instrumental to his success. For just $97, see how to use candlestick patterns to analyze stocks and options in order to capitalize on market swings, increase your odds of success, and decrease your risk. During this live webinar, you will learn when to use and when not to use Japanese candlestick patterns in this volatile market. Dispel the myths about this strategy and see just how much the mastery of candlestick pattern recognition can impact your trading. Visit TFNN.com today. TFNN. 
Educating Investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back, Basil Chapman sitting here for uh, for Larry Pesavento. Now, let me just show you a couple of things using the same technique. Let's go to the continuous contract of wheat. This is the continuous contract of wheat, um, trading at six thirty six and three quarters, up a dollar and three quarters. So the patterns we were looking at, uh, there's a pattern that I also call the Eiffel Tower. This is not quite that; it's more like a pyramid where it just goes straight up and then straight down. So this is wheat, and if you look at the daily chart, let me do. Now the letters you'll see the letters they've kind of slipped because of the continuous contract. So whenever the uh, price gets changed, that is, whenever they do the, the to get the right ratio uh, of a continuous contract, they have to join other contracts, etc. It gets smoothed out. The price changes. My letters are all hand notated. Uh, they can be automated but there are just enough subtleties for me to subtleties for me to be working on those separately to see how I can define them so that it can be uh, computerized or serialized but most importantly the nothing changes other than the letters themselves kind of slip a little bit so here's your peak D the fourth highest peak that's your objective we got to that D right there back in February pulls back, makes that arch formation, comes back, makes a lowercase h, that's the dreaded h, we were talking about the dreaded one, which goes to a lowercase m and it pulls back, goes even lower. Then it starts as kind of a, a U-shaped pattern, this cup formation, and goes up. And I like to do time sequences. I don't have that here. Let me get rid of the, even the Fibonacci numbers have been slipping because it gets smoothed out. Okay, so what this did is from the low in... Uh, wheat going back to the May the uh, there's a daily chart May the 31st 2023 at 547 remember uh, the prices it depends on when we look at them but that's a current price goes to peak a P I'm just counting each success over here that's the ease of this technique once you're able to identify a low you can just keep going a b c d until you get a turnaround it's at d that other things can happen I'm not going to spend time right now tomorrow my technical uh, Friday's technical analysis for the Chapman Wave methodology. I might do a little bit more. Uh, and also, if you're interested, just give me a, give me a yell at Basil Chapman at tfnn.com. Um, now, look at this. There's the arch formation. There's another arch formation. This one hasn't really taken out the low. You can give it a little bit of time. 
So I like to put in moving averages that are just there. You don't have to use them when you don't want to, but when they're important, they are so important that they become magnets. They attract the price and then they repel the price. So I'm looking at this orange line right here. The daily chart went right to the 200 period moving average and then plunged lower at a peak E, turns around, makes the cup formation. And this is what I always say. You see, the reason why I put these in, look, when the stochastic barely goes positive above 80%, and all the textbooks will tell you um, stochastic over 80% is overbought, stochastic under 20% is oversold. I say, absolutely, that's just wrong, wrong, wrong. Over 80% is great. That's what you want to see. Under 20% is negative. That's what you, if you're short, that's where you want to see it, holding there. And the cup formation is formidable. I just drew this in moments ago during the break. Look, there it is. There's the arch formation. First arch, here's the second arch. I drew this in. I was going to do a left side, right side price time match, but I didn't have time because the break was up. But I would have gone to this, to that trough over there. I would have made that green and then this one pink and said, okay, the next level is going to retest the 44.85 level. And if that gets taken out, you've got a complete change of scenario uh, for any investor today, any, I won't call it any trader today. Why? Because we've, the pattern of having sharp moves to the downside, we've seen for a couple of days, and then a spiral to the upside, only to give back either all of it or a chunk of it, chunk of it by the end of the day, we've reversed that today. So now we should see maybe selling into three o'clock and then maybe some buying comes in. Most importantly, what I'm looking at here is that this V-shaped pattern right here, I call it like an Eiffel Tower. If it wasn't for that little peak, that would have been an Eiffel Tower going straight up to A and then a single leg failure to the downside. Well, uh, we're watching this very closely. Why? Because now the uh, S&P, this is the futures are down, negative. The S&P cash is at up only a dollar, and the Dow is now only at 56. And this is this is the whole beauty of being able to use certain technical indicators. Now, what I love about Larry, I'm not going to go another another second further without saying, when we talk analysis, candles for me, the reason why I like candles is just because it opens up the chart. When you got the bar charts, it's a little too close; you can't see everything. Number one. Number two is candles give you an incredible amount of information. Where they open, where they close, uh, what they do, intra-bar, intra doesn't matter if it's a one-minute or a monthly chart, 10-minute chart. It just gives you that information. So on Monday, Teddy Kekstack is going to be doing, and he, he does fabulous work with currencies, with a lot of different things, but especially with um, currencies. But he's going to be showing you a completely separate. He's got an individual webinar that is for understanding candlestick patterns. So I highly recommend, I've heard him so often, so accurate. He's the one that was talking about crude oil going to the moon way back a couple of years ago. And wow, he was right. And he's been, he just fabulous work. So I'm just suggesting to you, if you're interested at all in candlestick patterns, please consider, go to the front page of TFNN, check out this, uh, this is a, an, a separate entity to his usual, uh, his, his different, his own service that he has here. So um, I, I advise that. I like, I've got certain candles, some that I've created names for. Chapman Wave Roman candle, we, we had that the other day. It's just, it's really important. We had the Roman candle back in the S&P at the top in the monthly chart back in 2009. No, sorry, just immediately after the top. Uh, these everybody's got their candles that they really favor, and I think he's he does an incredible amount of work. And he has, actually he has a book on candlesticks, so I recommend. Now let's get back to our story. So I'm going to go back here and say you've got this double top with the 200 period moving average being hit and re repelling the price. Did I need this when I was here? No. Did I need it when I was there? No. But the moment it gets within a fraction of that, it's like a magnet. It grabs the price, and then it either goes over and holds, or it gets repelled. This got repelled. So one technical indicator you didn't even have to think about. It's just sitting there doing its own, and then suddenly it becomes important. All right? It's like you're driving along. 
And out of the blue, there's this light that's about to change from red to yellow or green to yellow. You say, whoa, 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 whoa. that's exactly what it is. It's a, whoa, 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 all right. Next thing I wanted to show you, so wheat, so for subscribers to my opening call, we've had the DBA forever. Uh, since this, the, at the bottom, right here, see the little doji candle of the monthly? Well, in June of 2020, we went long at 13.25. And what is it? It's the DB Agriculture Fund. So we've taken little bits off. We still have a core position. We went all the way to 23.01 in May 2022. I could show you the symmetry, the bar, left side, right side, price, time match right here. Let me just show you this. Uh, I chose from this particular area here, and I chose a particular candle. I always teach about that in my uh, uh, webinars, etc. And it went right to it, then it pulled back. So in a sense, this looks a little bit like a cup and handle, one of my, one of the, my least favorite uh, chart patterns, because when you finally realize what it is, it's a little bit too late. Not only that, when the handle breaks to the upside, the price comes back to the handle. I'll be the back Gold there. Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's at 57. S&P's at $1.77. Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavent to trade what you see. So what you see right now is a peak D in the, in the DBA. Uh, that's the DB Agricultural Fund. Pulling back sharply, uh, I, and the, the whole thing about this is that grains were doing very well. Now grains are starting to uh, slump quite a lot. Look, S, uh, did I do S? No, soybean made a peak F top, pull back sharply, is holding quite nicely here. Uh, all those letters are in the wrong place, but this did go to a peak F right there. 
pulls back, a very strong A to B. And this is in a buy mode with the stochastic still holding over 80%. Magdi is very good. Nine is way over the 14. So soybean contract, uh, let me just, sorry, this is the, there it is. And come back. There it is. Soybean continuous contract is still holding well and peak D, a leg D in the month. You have to wait for the whole month to finish before calling it a peak. So this is one of the better ones. Look at corn. This is a continuous contract. Ugh, I've lost some of those notations. Oh, and I had the beautiful left side, right side price. Ah, oh, I did everything. Anyway, so yes, there's, there's H pattern. Remember the red H fails at a peak B? This is going to be important because if corn suddenly breaks down, you can see in the monthly it's got this arch formation with the big spike here. Nine is still positive. It's really close in the monthly to turning pink. That would say that the grains are pulling back. And in fact, in fact, we're having a deflationary perspective here. Not if you include crude oil, because crude oil's had a really good run. It's getting a little bit tired. Look at that on balance volume. It's just turning up from an overbought level. But the stochastic holding at 91% and flat holding in this area, that is what you want to see. So I still see crude oil as having internal strength. But it is in this rectangle. If it starts to trade and close up on a weekly, there's a weekly chart in the middle, and a daily on the left, monthly on the right. If crude continuous contract can start to trade into, well, actually now I'm going to get rid of all. This was really important for us for a long time in my analysis. Don't need it anymore. Let's just get out of everything. We'll go with the clean chart, and then I like clean. So let's just do that. Clean, clean. A uh, little square there, gets, everything gets taken away. And now you'll see that, in fact, just a there's nothing to do. You take your little arch formation, you say, whoa, wait a minute. Crude oil is actually making higher highs and higher lows. It was making lower highs and lower lows. Now it's sort of turned the, turned the table. The weekly charts at 86%. And the unbalance is a little bit overbought. MACD is fabulous, 9 over the 14. So this says crude oil has a chance to trade if it can trade and hold for two out of three weeks. If it can hit 86.30 or higher, it means that you're going to be making that 83 level to 82 very strong support. You've got a whole new range now in crude oil. So we're going to be watching this. The daily is a little bit overbought. All the tactics are still pretty darn good, except for the on-balance volume says, hey, be careful, it could have a little bit of a pullback here. So I wanted to show you something else here. Look at this, dollar. So these are the same techniques. As long as I've got a price that I can follow, I can do Chapman Wave. The only thing that doesn't work is the VIX. I don't try because it's an emotional uh, indicator, the volatility index. It can go to a C at 85.47 in March of 2020 and then plummet and not even think of a D. It doesn't need that because it's something very different. But you see this horizontal line right here at about 15, between 15 and 14? That's telling us that the VIX index has a bit of a flaw. Um, it's not a flaw F-L-A-W, but an F-L-O-O-R. Why? Because look, this line goes all the way back. I can go back and back and back. Um, the bank crisis, October 2008, it hit 89.53. This is the CBOE volatility index. And then it comes back, and it was in the 14s to the 8s for years. And then all of a sudden, through the, the vi coronavirus, we get ourselves something completely different. And you're going all the way here to the uh, March 2020 low high in the VIX at 85.47 under the 89.53 bank crisis high. And then it starts to make this a new base, a lot little higher than it was before in the 14s. I'm watching this closely because on a short term level, the reason that I want to remain short uh, the Dow, because we have a little bit of room because we got, as I said, just about the exact top, is because this volatility index is starting to treat the whole area of 15 to 17 or even 18 as a new comfort zone. We haven't seen that before. Usually it pops up and then fails. Look at this. He has your inverted arch formation. Treated H right here. But this is a successful one because it ran up from the te test of the left side high. It was a higher high than that particular low right there. So this says if the volatility index continues to remain in the 16s, Moving to the 17 or 18 level over the next few days, there's going to be selling pressure. 
Now, I, I, I need to show something else because maybe you don't know my work at all. There's something else I do. And that is, I have a thing called the dark news cloud cover. And all it is, it says that in the context of news, I don't want to get into news because I'll start going off on a rant, but let's just say in terms of news, the market is always vulnerable to something. There is always interest rates, impeachment, uh, who knows what it is. There's always something out there that, that, that worries the market. But I like to draw it in as internal high and residual high. In other words, it's like an earthquake, and we do that at the lows as well. I did it mostly at the lows, although I talk about it at the highs, but we use some other techniques. But look at this. Into a low, residual low, this is from the uh, uh, from the 9, from September of 2021. Um, and then October the 1st, you get the low. That was the residual low. And then you had that fabulous news. Then I typed in 8th of November 2021, dark news cloud cover. And all it is is... This is the moment that I think that the market is going to start to respect something in the news and take it as something very serious. The same news yesterday could be like water off a duck's back. The very next day becomes, oh, my God, oh, my God, crash, my you know, end of the world. And I like to look at it as earthquake and aftershock. At the top, earthquake, aftershock, either at, just about, just under, or just below the previous high, in this case, or the low, and then you have to watch to see what happens. And it's worked for us so, so, so many times. But back, we had many of these from November the 11th, 2022, but from this whole area, I said, you know what, it's just going to stay with us forever until we break above uh, 35,740, I think it was. And let me give you the exact uh, number. 34, oops, what was the high? 34,712. Until we break above it, that news is just going to sit there. If we break above it, we're going to have to look at the market a little differently. Well, lo and behold, we broke above it. Uh, this is the March low. We've, we've managed to get all of these lows very nicely. The top is always tough because there's no... In this particular case, I drew this in. I actually drew it in, but then I lost it the other day. And I said, this is the new dark blue cloud cover. And at this particular point, at any stage, the market's going to take very seriously something in the economic news that makes it very nervous. I think we're there, just for the shorter term. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dallas at 42 SEC. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So, folks, uh, Basil serving in for Larry, and we're looking at DNCC, Dark News Cloud Cover. Uh, that I, I, I think it was a little before. I'm just putting 726, and as I say, on August the 1st, a couple of days later, we actually went short the Dow with that loss. You never know, but if you get the edges of the outside, I love to try to get there. And that's what Larry does so well. He has numbers that he looks at that you look and you say, how did he get well, It's just we're trading at 20, and he's got... 15 is the price to get it, and he, it, it just works so beautifully. So whatever your technique is, I say just repeat it over and over. Refine it. Get to, get to know it. If it really works for you, nobody should say anything. Anybody should say, hey, that's great. And if you add something else that is additive, that's even better. So now let's do this because I had a couple of requests. Let me just do that before I run out of time. KRE. This is a technique that I developed years ago, if I can type in the right place, right there. <clears throat> called the Chapman Wave, I always put these under the umbrella of Chapman Wave, Chapman Wave Price Volume Climax Low. So KRE trading, this is the S&P Regional Banking ETF. All these techniques are the same. It doesn't matter if I'm applying them to the futures or the E-mini. Remember the dreaded H? I bet we broke it on the left, so the left side low. Yep, there it is. Uh, right here. There it is. You just keep making these dreaded H's and keep going lower and lower. So this is, to me, a really important moment in the market because it's telling us that the, the general, the Dow, cannot leave the troops without the troops following. Either they're going to come back and join the general or the general's going to come back and join the troops. And right now, I think the general will come back and join the troops. So K, K or E, use the tech, well, I use the technique right here. When the volume on a it goes down, 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 and then finally, just everyone just throws everything out with the baby of the bath. I don't like that expression, but anyway, it is an expression. And on the 4th of May at 34.52, you get this massive gap down. You look at this volume. It's unbelievable. Major volume uh, explosion. The price turns around. My rule of thumb is if it can close sharply and start to hold nicely above the the candle high of the big down day, you can go 28 sessions, and if it holds 28 sessions above the high of that bar, it can go 56 sessions um, without coming back to test the low. And this one's gone even more. It's trading at 47. I had a left side, right side price time match. It did that to the lower level right here, not to the higher one. Uh, it did it to this one here. <clears throat> And that stopped. Let me see. Oh, there, that, that goes to there. It was a couple of days late. Anyway, so this is holding the nine period moving average, but everything about this is the on balance run is very weak. The stochastics weak. The relative strength, the little gray lines weak. The MACD's turned down, but it isn't expanding too much in the nine period differential and the 26, but it's getting there. But look at this the green nine is still positive. So when that turns down, KRE should pull back. I would say 47, 47. If the 46 to 45 area is the very first 
base of support that really has to hold. If it breaks that, 45.42 is the 14-period uh, exponential moving average support in the weekly chart. You see this weekly chart here. Technicals are all very good. So I would like to see the financials pull back in this uh, digestive phase we're in right now. That's what I'm looking at. But even if it rallies, the 40.84, 200-period exponential moving average, it hasn't even been there for since it was tootling around in February, and it couldn't break and hold above it. And then look at that repellent zone. It did it even before that. So that's really important. The 200 period moving average is way now down to 49, and I think that's going to be strong resistance. So I just give it time. I'm just saying to you, at this particular point, um, I, we might see that happen. Now, the next question came in. Uh, would I look up? Where did it go to? Um, HGX. So I'm a little upset about this. HGX is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. Now, we went short TOL, Toll Brothers. Why? Because it made this dreaded H pattern. It was rallying, and I thought it could have just a little bit more, but it's bound to fail, and if it fails, it's going to make a lower low to a leg C to the downside. Well, we had two a split two split positions, one sorry, one split position got stopped out of the first, and today it just nicked us to the upside. It went to 81.91, and now it's at 79.21. Is it too late to do? I'd have to think about that. I don't think it's too late to do, but we've already had uh, one attempt that was split two ways, and I, I did it two ways because the, the second short was higher higher up than the first, but it was like a one or something point to stop. I mean, when you're shorting something to put a one or two points stop is nothing. But I'm just not prepared to do that. I'm going to wait and see. I do think that it's in the consolidation area. It's been, it made all-time highs. Why would you want to short something at all-time highs? Just because I got the signal. <laughs> but uh, the signal is working, but my, my money management said I just can't take much risk at all. So we didn't take much risk. But this looks to me that when the nine-period moving average of the HGX daily chart actually crosses negative. And look how much you have to go down for it to do that. If it goes under, it's a six, 562. If it goes under 550, that low there was 559.29. That's the daily chart. If it goes under, if it closes under 558, I think it's in a digestive phase in the daily and that should affect the weekly. If it makes a new high above 581, that's not just impressive, that is fantastic. Next one is um, Microsoft, MSFT, Microsoft. And remember, all these notations that you see before you are done by me. Now, you see, I like to look at double tops. So, first of all, peak D is where you think other things can happen. <clears throat> this has actually gone to an F and has pulled back very sharply. It's up 34 cents at 332.56. But it's in a sell mode in the daily. The weekly is still holding really strong. If it can get at 322, if it starts to trade under this candle right here, the low of 312, if it starts to trade 10 points lower, it'll take a while. But if it does that, then that weekly chart for the first time since uh, quite a while, since earlier this year, is starting to show very negative action. But even here, it, it flipped back to positive on the nine period moving average. But this is what I'm looking at. In the is this is typed in incorrectly. This is either an E or a B. There's an alternate count uh, in my show tomorrow in my Tiger Technicians Hour at uh, 10 o'clock. I uh, Fridays when I do more chat wave notation analysis, I'll discuss this. I'll, I'll put it down. Microsoft, Microsoft, or someone will remind me. This is the monthly chart. I like to look at the vertical analysis, and that just says, look, when it made that high back in November of 2022, uh, 2021, <clears throat> at 349, the MACD was fantastic. Look, the MACD was fantastic. Stochastic was flat and holding in the 90-something percent area. On balance volume gave a hint that it was about to turn down, but it took another uh, another two days to do, two months to do that. But look what's happened here. <clears throat> The MACD is flipped positive. The stochastic's flat at 87%. The on balance is a little bit overbought. The nine is over the 14. Yeah, the technicals are still pretty darn good. It says it could drop all the way to the 290s, and everything could still be holding very well. So I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, 
that Microsoft has consolidated after a fantastic run, kind of a double topish pattern, and um, it'll take a little while for it to get back on track, but it needs to digest this. I'll be back for the final segment, Battle Chapman, Tiger Missions Hour. Oh, that's my show. This is Larry's show. Trade what you see. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Folks, as we wrap up here, Basil Chapman for Larry Pizzavento. On Monday, um, Teddy does his uh, candlestick charting webinar. It should be fabulous. I just want to show you something here. I developed this technique years ago. It's called the Roman candle. I was speaking about it earlier on. We've got a Nike, a Nike um, trading in the daily chart at 108. You see this, first of all, when you go very quickly to a peak A, then a B, then a C, then a D, then an E, and you're not really going very much higher. It says be careful because you should get quite a bit of a pullback. Not a major sell signal, but a pullback. That's number one. Number two is this is the Chapman Wave red inverted Roman candle. And what the day is young, so it could close anywhere. I'm saying right as we're looking at it at two at 1:55 p.m. If tomorrow is a daily candle, if it closes close to this, if any time tomorrow Nike trades above 111.10 for 60 minutes or more, today's high of 111.95 could be tested. If it closes within the next two days below the low of today which so far is 108 uh, and 0.60. If it closes under that, be careful 
because it says the next low on the left side could be your target, which is 107.35. So this is, this is a perfect example of Chapman Wave Roman candle, but the inverted, I call it the red one, because it has the wick, the long wick to the upside. Oh, and it has to close halfway to three quarters from the top of the long wick, or the, if it's the upside from the bottom of the long wick. So it, it looks like a Roman candle. When you light a Roman candle, whoosh. Okay, so as, just to sum up, we are short for subscribers to my opening call. We are short the SMHs, and we've got a, a rather aggressive position there. And we are short the Dow. Uh, our short in the um, uh, home builder, the to Toll Brothers, would have worked if I had a little patience. Uh, it's doing everything I wanted, but it just stopped us out as a little pop to the upside. And we are looking at this askance saying, cash is king right now. Just be careful of what's coming up. It doesn't have to be a major sell signal. Each sector is getting a rotation to sell within it. So just I get to in the X night I'll do tomorrow. It's not moving good. Have a great rest of the day.